Hello to all of you! I am delighted to host today's discussion about the DNA of future medical devices. Joining me today is Guidi Medina, an innovator, founder, thought leader and CEO of two technology companies, including a medical technology startup with a transformative and revolutionary product line. Guidi is a true believer in brand agnostic device, cross-communication, standardization and the favorable implication it will have on the industry. At the same time, he promotes quality, high technology development and top of the line services. With is passionate about healthcare as a fundamental right, data control as a personal right and well-being as a human right. Welcome to today's conversation. Thank you so much, Anka. Um, today is more a conversation um, and not, a, not an interview. So today also we have uh, Anka Petri um, she holds a PhD, is a digital health entrepreneur passionate about the impact in emerging technologies in healthcare. She holds a double degree in uh, pharmaceutical science and management. She specializes in uh, blockchain technology uh, in the healthcare industry. She's also a thought leader focused on bringing new technology to healthcare industry and patient involvement in the digital um, innovation process. So I think that uh, she's uh, extremely prepared to uh, uh, to really uh, push me to the limits here in this conversation. Thank you, Wendy, for this introduction. Um, let's jump into the first topic of our discussion today. And I want to talk about the way that we can create quality around a medical device by involving patients in providing feedback and designing the solution. Let me tell you a quick story. A couple of days ago, I was researching um, Apple's strategy in healthcare, and I realized that their strategy it is based on three main things. First thing is that they have to comply with regulation, like any medical device company. The second thing is that they build their solutions very close to the medical community to make sure that everything is science-based and validated by healthcare professionals. And the last thing, is that they involve patients, they involve the consumer, and they create this seamless user experiences that we're used to with Apple devices. And I think this is a great lesson for all medical device providers to involve patients in the design process, involve patients in co-constructing the functionalities, but also in providing feedback at the end of the, at the, end of the day when the product is on the market. What are some of your thoughts on this, Widi? I'll have to agree. Um, uh, we as designer manufacturers uh, sh should follow that that lead and, and um, uh, from Apple. Um, you know, looking at the looking at the end user as a source of uh, of immediate feedback for product design, product development, and implementation of of, the, of new technology is key, uh, especially for us on the uh, on the medical field. Um, historically, we historically we have not done that, right? Um, I come from from uh, backgrounds on on consumer products, also development, and uh, to also tell you a story, we 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 did that mistake, right? Um, we uh, we thought about the about a, a need of a product in a silo. Uh, we designed the product in that silo, um, thinking that we we knew exactly what the what the customer was requiring without we without double checking, triple checking, right? Um, with the uh, with the customer, so um, very quickly we lost direction, and, and we ended up with with a, with a product flop just because of that. So uh, you know, like as everybody, uh, I feel that we should we should learn from our lessons, and and that was in in a market that was not as critical as medical device. Um, definitely involving end users in in early stages of development. It's, it's something that requires the companies to break with the instinct, right? Um, usually we hide um, uh, behind a curtain when we, when we think that we have something that, that it's uh, transformative. Um, and, uh, and that's a complete mistake. Um, yeah, there's always going to be um, issues about, about protection and all of that. But, but we need to be inclusive. We need to open up. We need to, um, we need to make sure that we understand um, the the people that we're going to impact with our product. So I, I only I only agree with uh, with that. Uh, that we, we always go with the IP issue. We always go with uh, protection. We always go with all of that. We can continue protecting 
our our companies, our technology by by development, right? Um, that that's the key. The key is that we are at the forefront of development, pushing technology instead of just protecting the whole thing that we the whole idea that we came up with. Um, so that's that's kind of my my opinion on that, and I agree with you completely. Witty, I talk to a lot of uh, patient representative and patient advocacy groups, and one of the things that they tell me is that when they talk to m medical device manufacturers, um, usually they just don't don't know how to involve patients. They have no idea other than developing the device, putting it on the market, giving it to patients, and asking them for their feedback. They they have no methodology. They don't really communicate with patient advocacy groups. So what would be some of your tips for medical device manufacturers to build a stronger and closer relationship with patients and patient advocacy groups during the whole development process and not just when the product is ready? Definitely. And, and uh, th there, there's two answers to that. There is the, uh, there is the answer where we use third parties and because th this is happening so much right now and the development of, of uh, medical devices is, has a boom in, the, in this particular uh, um, historical point for, for obvious reasons, right? L last year kind of pushed everybody to look more into this, this vertical. Um, but, but there's two answers to that. Uh, because of the boom, there's also um, services related to, to that boom that had come up. There, there's companies that are dedicated to supporting that particular um, effort of getting patients involved. There is a lot of new companies coming up with, with supporting us as medical device manufacturers to, to engage and engage in a, in a uh, very interesting way with patients. So, so there is something already happening there as, as an organic growth of, of, uh, of this effort. Um, but I also have to, I also have to say that we need to, we need to change the mindset um, from the core, from, from the company, we need to change the mindset. Um, we need to change from understanding that, yeah, we're, we're producing a product to generate revenue, keep our employees in, 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 um, in a good position and then uh, do more R&D for the next one. That, that's basic. That's, that's the basic that we need to do. But, but uh, we need to be patient focused, right? And when we are patient focused, that happens automatically. Like, uh, what, what happens automatically is that there is no way that if we want to be patient focused, we are not inclusive on that opinion. So we need to make roundtables um, with uh, end users. We need to understand on a, on a, um, on a well-balanced um, um, set of, of, uh, of information what is it that, that we need to put out in the market? What is the true need? Not consider one group, one country, one social group. We need to make a, we need to make a round table that represents everybody. Everybody needs to have representation because they all have a different need. They all have a different concern. Um, and, and, and we need to start learning from those concerns if we want to really have a business on home. I think you make an interesting point, which is that we need to consider we need to consider what patients need, but also what they worry about, and this leads me perfectly to the second topic that I want to discuss with you, which is the fact that patients are really concerned about the use of their health data at the moment. Um, there's this European survey that shows that 45% of patients are more concerned about the use of their health data than the use of any other type of data related to them. I guess the same can probably be said in the US and other areas of the world, but this is absolutely huge. So patients are now aware of how sensitive their health data is. They're also aware about the fact that a lot of private companies will want this data because it has value. What value? Not all of them know but they do understand that it holds some value somewhere. And I feel like this is a very big concern patients have. What are some of your thoughts on this and how do you integrate this worry as a medical device manufacturer when you create your products? Uh, I have to agree with that. And, and there's a base for that concern. There's definitely a base for that concern because I, I believe that, that um, we at the, at the corporate side has, has always 
thought of ourselves as, as sole owners of data, um, and 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 are usually usually because of a, of of an instinct to to use that data to to develop. I, I'm not even going to go in the in the use of data for for wrongdoing. I think that there's truly uh, a a um, an interest from corporations to use data to um, to better their product, to better their services, but at the same time, we're forgetting that that where that data is coming from, what what the true who the true owner of that data is, um, and how we should we should equally manage right um, that or involve that that owner of data in the conversation. Um, so so th there's a base for the concern now. Um, there's all there's also a. Uh, something that the user needs to, to understand. So we need to understand something from the user and the user also will need to understand um, uh, where are we coming from, um, from the corporate side, right? Um, so on our end, we need to better on that. We need to, we need to uh, come up with a way where, where we not only acknowledge where the data is coming from, but we are inclusive also on, on um, Discussing the use of that data uh, with the owner, with the patient, um, what will be the result um, if if uh, if everything goes as as planned, right? What will be how would will we manage that data? Uh, has to also be out in the open um, and transparent, but we'll have to we we'll have to make sure that the user also understands that that the the data it's so critical for us to provide. The, uh, the right product and service that they have there has to be a middle ground in this and and I think that the mistake is not really sitting down um, and, and discussing what those are or openly openly expressing the details of, of what we intend to do with with data management with the end user very openly not not small letters not not hidden at the at the bottom of a of an app when you're when you're getting in an app that is sharing data, not hidden at the end of a of a paper if it's a if it's a signed contract for any particular data exchange, you know we have to be transparent and clear about about that information. Uh, but we need it. There, there's really no way that we can accelerate at the at the pace that is needed in medical device if we do not use. Uh, the uh, patient data. We we need the use of patient data. We just need to be responsible about uh, about the use and about sharing how we are um, using it with uh, with the patient. That's what I believe is the the problem. It's communication more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And right now, I'm working on a book that explores the relationship patients have with their health data. And I wanted to share a couple of things that I learned that could be relevant for our discussion today. The first one has to do with um, the time we live in. When you look into the way that patient movements have evolved over time, you see that there are moments in history where there are some peaks of you know, patient engagement and patient wanting to be more involved in their care. The first peak started in the 60s and uh, it reached a maximum during the 80s and the AIDS epidemic because at that time, patients were feeling like medical research wasn't going fast enough and they wanted to contribute, they wanted to be very active. And that was a huge step for patients in actually taking a very active role in medical research and in their care. Today, we are going through another epidemic, a pandemic. And the question that I have is, maybe today we are recreating the same conditions we had in the 60s and the 80s where patients um, feel like what the healthcare system is giving them is not enough anymore and they want to be more active. Maybe they, we will hear things like, I want to contribute with my data um, or maybe the other way around. I'm scared of the way that companies are using my data and healthcare providers are using my data and I want to take more control over it. So I feel like these um, moments in time that are you know, around epidemic, but just big shifts in the way that we interact with our healthcare system are also moments in time where the way that patients see their healthcare system and the expectations they have towards their healthcare system 
is also evolving and discussions are evolving. And this is exactly what we see today around healthcare data, that this discussion was not here even five years ago, and today it is at the center of everything. And um, building on this idea of healthcare data, today we see patients asking for ownership of their health data. They say, I want control, I want to own my data. And one of the reasons that they're saying this is simply because they're scared, and rightly so, because each time you turn your TV on, you hear of some data breach in a hospital, you hear that some other company is selling your personal data, and this is very, this creates a lot of anxiety on behalf of patients. So the natural reaction is, you know, I don't want to share anything anymore, just give it back to me. But the question that I have, and maybe you, you can share your thoughts on this, is this viable? Can we actually give patients their data back? Can they have control? From what you're saying, it's not really that interesting for companies because sharing with the patient and interacting with the patient and being a, bringing, uh, creating a trustful relationship with the patient, this is what um, creates innovation and this is what creates progress, not patient, patients wanting to take control back. So maybe there's a balance to be found between cooperating, sharing, but at the same time reassuring the patient that everything that is done is done in his interest and that it is done with the best integrity, security and privacy rules that are out there. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, going back to the, uh, going back to the beginning of your statement, which, which is very accurate um, um, and the data that you, that you just provided, uh, as, as you can see, this this is a result of, of human reaction, right? We we uh, we naturally and instinctively, if things are going well, we don't we don't really dig in too much into things, right? Um, and, and we don't we don't try to to uh, to really uh, solve or resolve um, issues that at that particular point in time are non-existent. But when they when they pop up, right? Uh, when when they come up and and specifically when there are situations that, that put um, lives at stake, that, that uh, put uh, the, uh, the society at, at risk, right? Like uh, pandemic situations, the AIDS, the AIDS uh, um, um, situation uh, uh, back, back, uh, back then in time. So, so those things really shake the core of society. Uh, people get frightened and, and, uh, and being scared is, is a uh, huge incentive uh, for for everybody, right? And I, I don't think that's agnostic to to one particular person. I think that affects everybody. Um, and uh, on the most recent um, case uh, last year, um, a lot of people got scared, and um, and and I could I could dare to say that everybody, in one way or another, was was concerned or scared, and it's natural. Um, and then. And when you, on top of that, start hearing about about the, uh, the data breaches, use of data, problems with stealing data, and, and, and first the, the conversation was on the financial aid, a uh, uh, financial side. I'm sorry. Then then now you move to the health because that is right at the forefront of every conversation every day. Uh, same breach in in, in uh, um, health data that 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 people. Uh, instinctively just just do you you know the, the arm brace they they try to brace the information and they want the, the power back uh, up to this point that was not important first of all because back in the 80s there was not the amount of data and the the amount of data exchange that that there is today right um, so today everything that 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 you do in one way or another translating to data and information walking on the street, translating to data and information because there's video capturing you. Uh, speaking at your home, it's, it's data exchange because you have listening devices that you use for your comfort, right? At the home. So everything is data exchange these days. So, so it's just natural that people want to, want to get uh, ownership of that. I have an idea that might be a little bit um, Controversial for for from a standpoint of a of a uh, CEO of a of a medical device company because I go a little bit more to the left if you want to see it I go to a little bit more to the side of the of the uh, um, of the patient uh, I think 
I think that we have gone too much to too much to the on the balance. We have gone too much on the side of of, of us of corporate kind of uh, keeping keeping data in, in control, keeping all of that as a, as a, as tight as we can, and and not like I said before in my last statement, not considering the uh, the true owner of that. And, and it's only right for the people to start asking, hey, you know, let's balance this thing out. And what we need to do is keep that in balance and not go to the side where, where then it is so onerous for, for us, the corporate people, to work with information that, that, that we cannot move forward, right? I believe that there is even a way for uh, end users and patients to generate revenue out of that data. They're owners of something that has value. I think that they should also um, earn some earn some out of the of that value. There's there's um, institutions, uh, universities, um, companies, uh, governments, uh, um, global organizations that need the the, the data, um, and that can that can in one way or another uh, pay for for the access to that. It, we also have to be. Uh, we have to negotiate in a way that is reasonable, that allows the the development of product and uh, and new technology to go out there, and it it does not become a roadblock for us, right? Um, so, I, I'm proposing, uh, as a matter of fact, that that um, on on one of our uh, on our product on our flagship product, I'm proposing that that the data, it's completely managed by the by the uh, Patient, that they decide with whom they're going to share it, that they decide um, um, how that data is going to use and put limits to the data, uh, to the use of that data. Uh, but I'm also proposing that in, in, in the long term, we blockchain this thing, right? Uh, and and we, we blockchain that to, to make sure that there is integrity in the whole thing. We put a layer of protection on top of that, of that, uh, of that blockchain, uh, but we also allow that to to be in one way or another monetized, right? If if the user has the key to that to that blockchain, then then they can monetize on that. And I believe that's gonna trigger a complete different transformation of how people see the data ownership. And and what I also see on the positive side for us is that it will entice people to. Or, or, or kind of involve people on really generating data because now they are generating something that has value for them, not only for them to track their health, but there might be a way to monetize on this thing. So it will be, people will want to gather health data. They will want to record uh, their data. They will want to do all of that. It will have a positive side on both ends for them personally and then for personally to track their health, but also financially, if they want to sell that data, for us on the on the corporate side, it will be positive because we will have an, an exponential generation of data uh, because people are going to get more involved and willing. So, so I think that that we need to step back and 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 instead of this confrontational thing, we we, we uh, and and being scared one or the other, let's come up with with a a way that that kind of uh, works for everybody. I think that by uh, monetizing on data from the part of the patient at a reasonable at a reasonable level, um, will will increase the amount of data. Will allow them to 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 uh, to uh, be a little bit more. Um, involved in the whole process um, and we'll see the the information generated at the same way that they're checking on their bank account you know it's, it's the same interest because it will be something that they own that they can that they can use for their advantage so that's my opinion on that which by the way is very different from a lot of my peers at, at the level at the at the sea level of companies that that are trying to hold back to to the uh, current method right Right, and I think it's an interesting opinion, a very inclusive one, and one that reflects also the evolution of the healthcare industry. And um, you, you mentioned blockchain, so I have to stop a few seconds on this. Of um, course, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a huge advocate for the use of blockchain in healthcare, have been so for the past five years. And not going into the details of blockchain, but maybe on the reason why I'm so passionate about blockchain. Um, I think that we need to change the way that we see health data. Health data is not just, you know, numbers and words like other type of data can be. Health data is a part of us as humans. It's our dignity, it's our health, it's our uh, family life, it's everything that's extremely personal and intimate to us as humans. And once you collect, you uh, process, you use health data, you also have a responsibility towards the patient whose data you're using because you are basically you know, using something that reflects his humanity and his dignity. And that's a huge responsibility. And I feel like if we see health data this way, as, you know, part of a human, like, you know, a, a kidney, for instance, then we, we automatically change the way we see the data that we're using and the responsibility we feel towards that data and towards the patient that is behind that data. And when you see it like this, um, compensating the patient for sharing data, treating that data with respect and making sure that it is secure, that it is private, etc. It just comes naturally because you feel that you have in your hands something that's very precious. Um, maybe this is not the way that people usually think of health data, but maybe at the end of the day, this is how in our con in conscious, we, this is how we feel about our health data. This is why we're so scared when it is leaked or stolen, etc. So I feel like we have a very particular relationship with our health data. And technologies such as blockchain are here to ensure the fact that patients can have some control over their use of something that is so personal to them. And this is why I'm so passionate about the use of this technology. Yeah, I, I only agree. The data is an asset and, and we, need to, uh, we need to put the, the right definition on it. Um, I think that, that um, if we want to, if we want to um, have people um, really willing to 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 share um, something that is going to um, expand healthcare at, at inimaginable inimaginable levels, right? So we need that information. We need them to feel that they are doing something positive for themselves and for for humanity overall. Um, we will, from the from the standpoint of corporations. Uh, um, come up with with uh, safe ways to handle that and protect that information and uh, and then feedback which I think that that's another part that we're missing is the feedback and feedback to the people that share the data on the result of that of, of that information because if you also see uh, yeah there's, there's the monetary incentive of of it if I sell the data that's going to be super positive right for me and it's going to be an immediate uh, positive but but I think that the long-term positive for a lot of people uh, that are instinctively good, right? That, that when they get the feedback of we were able to develop this particular technology because of the of the data that 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 we got from you, we were able to develop this this new drug, this new uh, method, this new uh, this new app, this new uh, medical device. I think that that is going to be a huge incentive. Also, we do not tend to feedback uh, the people that 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 give data, and that is a big mistake. Um, we can we can touch the fiber of humanity of people by letting them know how effective was the the use of that data in pro of helping others. So so I think that that's also important. With you, we are reaching the end of our discussion. Um, one of the key points that I feel like are really important in everything that we've said so far is the fact that we have to be more inclusive in healthcare. Each time we develop a new product, each time we develop a new service, we have to think how can we collaborate with all the different stakeholders in healthcare, whether it is regulators, uh, governments, and especially patients. And You've been incredibly transparent on the way that you do things 
and willing to share so much about your vision on the way that we should involve patients in the design process and involve them even at the end when they provide their feedback. So thank you very much for that because I know for a fact that not a lot of companies share this vision and it's a very new way of seeing things. And so this is also what proves your thought leadership in this area. Oh, thank you so much, Anka. And, and uh, I, I agree with you. Transparency is key. Uh, transparency at every, at every level. You just mentioned uh, 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 all, all the major players, definitely uh, company developers, regulators. Everybody needs to get to get on that round table. Everybody needs to be transparent and open uh, about about the, the the purpose, direction, and 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 how and how things are uh, are going to move forward on healthcare. We need to get that healthcare. 5.0, right? Um, going, going as quickly as possible. We have the capability of of uh, transform transforming the whole healthcare industry into something that we all feel comfortable about. And and I don't think that we are there, but we have the right path forward to do it. And we need to take that path forward. Uh, this is uh, going back to 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 the title of the, of, of this conversation. It's. This is exactly what the um, the, the new medical device uh, DNA needs to be. It needs to be an an, an all inclusive, a a, uh, a a DNA that 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 has all this the richness of of the different ideas, cultures, um, social uh, levels. Uh, everybody needs to to put their point out there, and and we need to we need to definitely take all of that input uh, and redefine healthcare. This is the time. This is the time to do that. This is the historical time we were all shaken by understanding that the healthcare um, um, structure was not right. Right? We we saw that uh, the, there was no study, there was no analysis. We saw it. So what we need to do now is react on it, react responsibly, and uh, and not allow that to happen again. Thank you very much, Willie, and thank you to you all for participating in this conversation.